in this video something about the boost converter or the buck converter, I don't know that exactly. I want to show the very principles from the circuit. And I hope this complete circuit is visible. Important to tell that we send here a frequency into the Darlington. I want to explain that later. So the principles are very simple from these converters. Here is a coil. There is a DC source. Uh, some energy is sent into the coil. And you can consider the Darlington as a switch. So uh, in this case 8000 times a second the switch is closed and opened and that means that all the energy that's stored in the coil is dumped into the capacitor here. And these are two capacitors from 470 microfarad at 200 volts. I, do, I did not draw it in the circuit but important to tell two capacitors from uh, 470 microfarad at 200 volts. I also want to explain later why that is so very important. 200 volts. Here are the uh, pin connections from the used transistors. Uh, I always use in my videos on YouTube, the 2N3055, the BD129, etc, etc. But here I cannot use that. And the reason is that these transistors here, that have to do the switching work, must be uh, high voltage transistors. So the BU12AF can handle approximately 1000 volts. This one can uh, handle approximately uh, 300 volts or so, and their base voltage in sometimes can be higher than the collector voltage. That's also important. So two typical high voltage um, transistors are used. And here we send in the, the frequency to drive uh, these two transistors that they act as a switch. So let's look at the circuit. Here are the, uh, the two transistors. This is one. This is the other one. This one. Uh, at the moment we can see that we drive in 12.7 volts at 1.8 ampere. We have a square wave that we drive in into the Darlington. That square wave has a frequency from 8.4 uh, kilohertz. And I found that the coil, the coil that in which is the energy stored and uh, given back into the cap, is not so very critical. So here you see one core that I've used, coil that I've used, as a ferrite white uh, core and this coil acts uh, more or less the same than this coil compared to this coil. And to keep it all very simple so that everyone can make this circuit, I've used a wall transformer. Here is a wall transformer. That's this one. Seven point uh, 5 volts at 230 volts. It gives enough energy to uh, send into the cap. Here. Here we have now 24 volts, two small uh, 12 volt lamps are burning now. Uh, each lamp 
has approximately 10 watts, 12 volts, so that's the load. Uh, I have to give a warning, never connect this circuit directly to your car battery in your car, especially when you disconnect the battery itself. Uh, the voltage will raise up to approximately 600 volts or so. And I want to demonstrate it later and also the enormous amount of energy. No load, so no lamps here or whatever means an extreme output voltage and current. And I want to more to study that much much more in the next videos. So let's look at what this circuit can give in the bad, in the most worst situation. I changed my voltage meter to 1200 volts. We see nothing now, but I am going now to disconnect the load and let's see what happens. The voltage rises to approximately say, I don't know that exactly, uh, 900 volts and we can see a lot of smoke from that 10k resistor that bridges, hope it's visible, that bridges this capacitor. So your uh, your resi resistor will burn completely out when there's no load. And that's the reason from my warning. Never connect this circuit directly to your automotive car battery system. The voltage will be driven up very very much. So one ampere 50 volt 15 watts. This is the waveform at the moment. And uh, I'm, I'm completely sure that your uh, car, uh, computer system, etc., will burn out when you use this circuit. So, in a standalone application, I'm sure you can um, use this circuit to uh, charge a car battery, but I have to study that much more and this is only the first experiment, only to show that these kinds of circuits can give an enormous output current and voltage and you have to be very careful when you want to use these circuits. So in the next video I hope to give um, better circuits in terms of practical usable. 8.4 kilohertz, this is the generator at the moment. It generates a square wave and I found that the square wave was the best, um, the best waveform to drive this um, boost converter. It uh, um, gives the best output voltage and output current. Try to go back to the normal load and you hear the click here. That was the high voltage stored in these two caps. So when it's loaded, 8.4 kilohertz. This is the waveform, good square wave. And I wanted to demonstrate now that when you change the waveform, uh, also the energy output is not perfect. So here we have the ideal waveform. Now we go to another. Uh, waveform by changing this generator. So here you can see 
what happens when we change the waveform to for instance this waveform the current goes down the voltage will go up of course so perhaps interesting to show that this waveform is the ideal waveform as far as I know at the moment now to drive this circuit.